Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's problem is the following crosses performed and fruit flies and here is a genotype of one parent and here is a genotype of the second parent to give F1 progeny of the genotypes that is going to be as follows. These F1s are crossed with another genotype which we call testers giving the following cross. The following test cross progeny are observed. Here is this table. What is the map distance between gene A and B? Now let's read a problem again. The following cross is performed in fruit flies. Here is a genotype of one parent. We can say parent one and here is a parent two. So what ABC slash ABC means? That means that we have one chromosome with ABC gene and another homologous chromosome with ABC genes. What this plus stands for? Each plus here means dominant or wild allele. For example, if we have recessive allele A here, here we have dominant A. If we have recessive allele B here, here we have dominant allele B. Sometimes it's not necessary that these alleles are going to be dominant they just can prevail in a gene pool. For example, the frequency of this allele can be 10% and frequency of the wild type allele would be 90%. So those it's not going to be, for example, dominant, it's going to be uh, more spread in the gene pool, so we will call it wild type. So if it's going to help you, you can change these pluses to dominant A, dominant B, dominant C dominant A, dominant B, dominant C. Now let's read again. So to give F1 progeny of the following genotypes. And this is going to be one chromosome, which this progeny, F1 generation, inherited from this parent. So let's say parent one, because parent one has two chromosomes with identical alleles on each chromosome. Second chromosome, so slash, means second chromosome, also with three alleles. And these three alleles, this progeny in F1 generation inherited from parent two, which had on both chromosomes uh, recessive alleles A, B, and C. Next, this F1 generation are crossed with uh, test cross. We call this test cross because this parent is homozygous recessive for each allelic pair. So recessive allele A, recessive allele A, recessive B, recessive B, recessive C, recessive C. So this organism is homozygous recessive for three allelic pairs. So we call this test cross. And this is going to be a test cross, one parent of this genotype, and this is another parent. And of course, this parent, when would produce uh, gametes. It doesn't matter whether it is male parent or female parent. If male parent would produce sperm, if female parent would produce egg cells, and gametes would be haploid. And during meiosis, of course, these two chromosomes may have a crossing over. But because each chromosome here has the same alleles, such crossing over is not going to lead to new recombinant variants. But this parent, because has three different alleles on each chromosome, here for example dominant A, on another homologous chromosome recessive allele A, here is dominant B, here is recessive allele B, here is dominant C, here is recessive allele C, of course such a parent may have different uh, variants of the recombination in a progeny. For example, take a look. Let's say this is one chromosome, here is another chromosome. Here is a one plus, second and third. Here is a small a, small b and small c. This is going to be F1 parent. Here is going to be another parent according to our problem who is going to be homozygous recessive for all three genes on both chromosomes. And of course, such a parent only can produce one variant of the gamete, which is going to be a chromosome with genes small a, small b, 
and small c. No, any other different variants are possible. We call this test cross. And this is exactly what we see here. This is genotype of this parent. And this is genotype of this parent. Gametes of this organism of this parent would be haploid and would have only one chromosome. It can be this chromosome or this chromosome, or it can be recombinant chromosome. So let's list all possible combinations. For example, one combination would be when no recombination. So one, two, three pluses. So this chromosome would be inherited by the progeny intact. Here's another variant possible when this chromosome would be inherited by the progeny, also going to be intact. So no recombination happened. But what if recombination happened in this place? What's going to happen? Then in this case, we are going to have following variant. Plus small b, small c. Plus small b and small c. And another variant as a result of such a combination would be small a plus plus. So let's also list it here, small a and plus plus. What if crossing over would happen in this place? Forget about this crossing over here. So in this case, one variant of the gamut of this chromosome would be plus plus. We will have plus plus and recessive C. So plus plus, small c, small a, small b, and plus. So this is going to be another variant of the same recombination, small a, small b, and plus. And we have left one variant of the recombination. This is going to be the rarest uh, recombinant when recombination would happen between gene A and B and B and C simultaneously. Then in this case, what's going to happen? We will have plus, small b and plus. So this is going to be one variant, plus, small b and plus. And another variant would be small a plus and small c. Small a plus and small c. So now let's count how many variants we may have variants of the gametes that this parent may produce. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight variants. Now let's count how many different variants we have here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now please pay attention. Only chromosomes on the left to the slash is different, but to the right of the slash all the chromosomes are the same. So all these chromosomes, let me circle with green color, are inherited from this parent, which is here. And only parent one, which is here, who can produce eight different combinations, we can find here all these combinations eight combinations. And of course, take a look, the most prevailing combinations would be when no crossing over happened. So this variant and this variant here. This is genotype one and genotype two would be this chromosome from parent one and this chromosome from parent two. This is the genotype. All the rest would be recombinants from parent one, from parent two, we do not see any recombination here. Now let's read the question. What is the map distance between gene A and B? So A and B. Now let's analyze where we see recombination between gene A and B. So we are looking only for this recombination. And this is going to be here, for example, take a look here we have one recombination between gene A and B. Again, you see plus here, but you can also say dominant allele A instead. And here's going to be another variant where recombination happened. 
and this is result of the uh, recombination in the same place here. So these numbers are very close to each other. And by the way, these numbers, which represent this chromosome and this chromosome are also, you see, very close to each other. And here we see variant where recombination or crossing over happen in two places, here and here, and here and here. And again, this is variant when crossing over happened between gene A and B and B and C. So double uh, crossover would result in these two variants here. You see, plus B plus, plus B plus, and A plus C, A plus C. So, and numbers are also very close to each other because these two recombinants are result of the uh, same double crossing over between gene AB and BC. Now the last step is left. Take a look. We just have to add 80 plus 76 plus 3 plus 1. This is going to be frequency of the variants where crossing over happen between gene A and B. So 80 plus 76 plus 3 plus 1 divided by total number of observed animals all genotypes so by 1000 if we combine all those numbers we are going to get 1000 so this would give us 0 0.16 if we need an answer in percentage form we have to multiply by 100 and this would give us 16 percent recombination frequency between gene A and B. But our question about map distance, so distance, let me underline this word, between gene A and B and not recombination frequency. You also have to know that 1% of the recombination frequency equals to one map unit and one map unit equals to one centimorgan. So 16% of the recombination frequency between gene A and B equals to 16 MAP units or 16 centimorgans. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day and see you in the next video. Goodbye.